Welcome to Timbridge Church Online. I'm Lauren and we are so glad you're joining us today. Easter is just a few weekends away. Make plans to join us on Sunday, April 17th for an encouraging message as we celebrate Easter. Also, don't miss out on Guys Night and Ladies Night. Guys Night will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Come for a nacho bar and some quality time with the men of the house and Pastor Nick. And ladies, Thursday is just for you. Join Pastor Johanna and Hadley Kibbe as they lead us in a night of worship and fun. The Mega Hunt is just a few weeks away and it is a great way to bless our city and love our neighbors. We want to say thank you to those of you who financially contribute to the ministry and mission here at Timbridge. From bounce houses to 50,000 eggs, when you give, it allows us to connect people to the love and hope of Jesus. And that's our mission. You can join us on this mission by giving from using our church website, timbridgechurch.com slash give, to Venmo by giving any amount to at Timbridge Church. You can see the ways to give, and we want you to know that your generosity impacts our friends and neighbors here in Stephenville and Erath County in a very practical way. Thanks for giving. We are in week three of our series, Set the Table. Let's jump into the message with Pastor Nick. Welcome to Timbridge Church Online. My name is Nick and my wife Johanna and I are the lead pastors here at Timbridge. Thanks so much for joining us today uh, at our online campus. I want you to think about a time where you've received an incredible invitation. Maybe you were invited to an amazing dinner, or maybe you got invited to a party that you really wanted to attend. Maybe a friend invited you to a sporting event, or you received an invitation to go on a trip with someone. There's something about an invitation that's special. Knowing that someone has thought about us and wants to include us and wants us to be a part of what they're doing, there's just something really cool about being invited. Well, today we're continuing our Set the Table series, and we're going to be looking at a parable Jesus tells about a banquet table, how people are invited to the table, and the significance of that invitation. Let's check it out. In the Bible, in Luke 14, verses 15 through 23, here's what we read. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I've just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, There is still room for more. So his master said, Go into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. This is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. One reason for that is because of how it resonates with what we believe here at Timbridge Church. Because we believe that lost people matter to God. We really believe that. That every single person, no matter their background or their past mistakes or their present condition and behavior, that every person matters to God. And that's what this passage is teaching us. You see, in this parable that Jesus tells, the master represents God. The master's house is the kingdom of God, the family of God, God's church. And the master desires that his house, his kingdom, would be full. You see, God wants the table and the kingdom to be full. There's two truths about the table that we have to understand from this passage. If we want to see the table full in the kingdom of God, two truths about the table. Here's the first one. Everyone is invited to the table so that everyone can be invited to the table. Now, that may, may, may not make much sense at first. So I'm going to say it again. Everyone is invited to the table so that everyone can be invited to the table. Well, what does that mean? Let's check it out. Luke 14, 16 and 17. Jesus replied with a story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. And when the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. Notice it was the folks already in the house that were given the task to invite more people to join the party at the table. 
The master gives the command to the servants, those already a part of the house, to go out and get more people to join the banquet and to sit around the table. Everyone is invited to the table so that everyone can be invited to the table. You see, if we're followers of Jesus, one of our first and primary tasks is to help other people find and follow Jesus. That's the command we've been given. That's our assignment. That's mission critical. How do we know that? There's a couple reasons. Number one, because Jesus said so. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus says, Therefore, as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Jesus' last words on earth were to give us the assignment, the command, the mission to live life in such a way that as we walk through life, we're inviting other people into the kingdom of God to find and follow Jesus so that they can experience the hope that's found in Him. But if that's not enough evidence that this is our mission, we not only have the words of Jesus, we also have the example of Jesus. In Mark chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says this, When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. You see, both the teachings of Jesus and the model of Jesus' life show us that as followers of Jesus, we're called to help other people find and follow him. We're invited into the kingdom of God in order to invite others into the kingdom of God. And every single person that God has placed in our life that has yet to experience the hope of Jesus for themselves is someone whom God has given us influence with in order to invite them into the kingdom, in order to invite them to sit around that table. Here's the thing. You have no accidental relationships. Every relationship we have is intentional and given to us as an opportunity from Jesus to help others find and follow Him. So we have to ask ourselves, who has God placed in my life that hasn't yet experienced the life and hope found in Jesus Christ? I want to make a confession today. I can sing a ton of Disney songs. That's the confession. I can sing a ton of Disney songs, from Frozen to Encanto to Moana to Descendants. I can rock them all. If you want to do Disney Princess Karaoke, I am your man. And I know what you're thinking. That's really odd for a grown man your age. But here's why. It's not because I love mediocre Disney princess shows. It's that I love being a dad to my nine-year-old daughter. I love being a dad and I love my daughter so I can sing all the Disney songs because that's what she's been into. That's what she loves, so I love it too. Why? Because my heart is connected to my daughter and that determines my actions. Catch this. A person that is connected to Jesus will always have a heart for people far from God. As followers of Jesus, we have to understand that we cannot love Jesus and not love hurting and broken people. That's who Jesus loves. So we love people too. If you're local to Stephenville or Erath County, let, let's make the Erath County applicable here. We're blessed by the hope and grace and love of Jesus in order to be a river, not a stock tank. The hope of Jesus shouldn't just run to us, it should run through us. The life we found in Jesus isn't just for our benefit and blessing, it's for us to pass the blessings of life and freedom found in Christ to other people who need to experience that hope and freedom too. Everyone is invited to the table so that everyone can be invited to the table. Here's the second truth about the table. It doesn't matter how good the food is, if you're never invited to the table. It doesn't matter how good the food is if you're never invited to the table. Back in the passage in Luke 14 and verse 16, it says a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Jesus tells this parable and he's quick to point out that the feast was great. This wasn't some thrown together last minute barbecue with hot dogs and stale Cheetos. This was a grand banquet, a huge party. It was something special. They were serving the good stuff. And so the master invited everyone to come and sit around the table and experience this incredible meal for themselves. 
few years ago, a couple friends of mine, a guy named Jonathan Attaway and Tanner Sparkman, they would always talk about this uh, barbecue place called Risky's Barbecue. And they would talk about the, the ribs there. Maybe you're familiar with Risky's. They have a couple locations in the DFW Metroplex, including a spot in downtown Fort Worth. And they have all-you-can-eat beef ribs. And anytime the subject of barbecue came up, Jonathan and Tanner would go on and on about how Risky's was so good and how great it was and how stuffed they were the last time they ate there and they just go on and on and on they knew I liked barbecue so they'd always tell me about how great it was but you know what they never did they never invited me to go with them so it didn't matter how great the ribs were if you never get to taste them for yourself don't just tell me the story invite me to go with you to experience those ribs for myself it doesn't matter how good the food is if you're never invited to the table for those of us who follow Jesus, we understand how good the food is. Or at least we should. I think sometimes along the way we can tend to forget how good the food is in the kingdom of God. We forget how much Jesus really changed our lives. We forget the brokenness and the hurt and the hopelessness we lived in before Jesus changed our lives and welcomed us into the family of God. We forget the lostness. We forget the hopelessness. We forget the lack of hope and peace we had. But we have to remember what we found in the family of God. We have to remember how Jesus has used the house of God to change our lives. Because in Jesus' house, around Jesus' table, the food is good. And it's filling. And it gives life. In John chapter 6, 35, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But how can people experience the fullness of the bread of life if they're never invited to sit around the table in the kingdom of God? How can thirsty people who are trying to drink everything the world has to offer in order to quench their thirst, how can those people taste the satisfying, thirst-quenching water of life that is Jesus if we don't invite them to the table? You see, Jesus isn't offering us some random bread to eat. He is the bread that fills our empty lives. Jesus isn't just offering us something to drink. He is the living water that satisfies our thirst-quenched souls. And for those of us who have experienced the bread of life and have been filled with the living water, we ought to desperately want that for others too. That's why we invite people to church. That's why we talk about our faith. That's why we invite people into our homes and share life with people and talk about how Jesus has made a difference in our lives. Because what we've experienced from the hope of Jesus, we want others to experience too. It doesn't matter how good the food is if you're never invited to the table. Several years ago, I had a friend, his name was Ben Cooney. He invited me to a Texas Rangers game. Now, I'm a Yankees fan, but I also just love watching baseball games in person. So typically, I'd be down to go to a baseball game anytime. Uh, but at this point, it was a really busy season here at the church, and I had a lot going on that week. So I told him, hey, man, I need to check my schedule first and get back with you. That's when he responded with this. Well, just let me know. These tickets are in the all-you-can-eat section, so it'll be fun. Excuse me? Did you say all you can eat? My schedule just opened up. I mean, have you heard of this? You go to the game, you sit in a certain section, and you have access to a plethora of baseball food. And you can eat as much of it as you want all game long. Not as much as you should, uh, because you eat way more than that. You can eat as much as you want. Sodas and popcorn, peanuts, chicken sandwiches, nachos, hot dogs, so many hot dogs. So Ben and I went and we ate and we ate and we ate. I think there was a baseball game that happened, but all I remember was how full I felt at the end of the game. I was stuffed. I was full. Here's what I know about that experience. When did full begin? When did it start? How did being full happen? It started, it happened because I got an invitation. Someone invited me to a place or I could be full. Here's the truth of the kingdom of Jesus. Everyone is invited so that everyone can be invited. Following Jesus means I'm invited to invite others. And when I make sure my life is full of intentional relationships, my friends taste hope. When my home is full, 
My neighbors taste hope. When my church is full, my friends taste hope. Hope. When we invite people into the kingdom of Jesus, to his family, to his church, to his table, we're inviting them to a place and into an experience where they can taste the bread of life and see that it is satisfying and it's filling. And they no longer have to look for the scraps of the world because they can be filled with the hope and freedom that is only found in Jesus, the bread of life. Let's pray together. As we pray together today, maybe there's never been a point in your life where your hunger and thirst has been filled. There's never been a point where you've actually feasted on Jesus as the bread of life. You've you've tried to fill yourself up with all the things of the world, but they've left you empty. and, And today you want to step into a relationship with Jesus. You want to allow Jesus to fill the void. In your life, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. There's nothing magical about the words we say or the phrases we we use, but what matters is the commitment of your heart and mind to Jesus. So, if you're ready to step into a relationship with Jesus, to allow Him to forgive you of your sins, to make you new, to fill your life with hope and freedom and life, you could pray something like this: Dear Jesus, today I say yes to you. I ask you to fill my heart and my mind and my life with your hope and your freedom. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to take control of my life. I commit my life to you, Jesus. Help me to walk your way and not my own. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, it is the most significant, life-changing decision that you will ever make. To, 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 To place the trust of your life into the hands of Jesus, there's no more important decision that you'll ever make. And we would love to know about it so that we can follow up with you. And so if you prayed that prayer and you were serious about that, about giving control of your life to Jesus, I'd love for you to let me know. You can do that one of two ways. You can send your first and last name uh, to 25 plus the word Jesus, your first and last name plus the word Jesus, to 25 Four four eight five two one one four, or you can go to timbridgechurch.com slash commit and fill out the, the card online as well. Let us know you made that decision. We want to put some resources in your hands that will help you as you begin this brand new relationship with Jesus, the living God. Thanks so much for joining us. If this blessed you, share it with a friend, send them the link, share it on your social media, let people know that it blessed you so that it can bless them too. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you back next week here at Timbridge Church Online. Thank you.